Breathing Water by Halil Mirm Read by Calvin Wilda He walked through the dry, crowded streets of Balfell, glad to be among so many strangers. In the wharfs of Vivek, he had no such anonymity. They knew him to be a smuggler, but here he could be anyone. A lower-class peddler, perhaps. A student, even. Some people even pushed against him as he walked past, as if to say, we would not dream of being so rude as to acknowledge that you don't belong here. Serene Ray Lass was not in any of the taverns, but he knew she was somewhere. Perhaps behind a tenement window or poking around in a dunghill for an exotic ingredient for a spell or another. He knew little of the ways of the sorceress, but that they always seemed to be doing something eccentric. Because of this prejudice, he nearly passed by the old Dunmer woman having a drink from a well. It was too prosaic, but he knew from the look of her that she was Serene Ray Lass, the great sorceress. I have gold for you, he said to her back, if you will teach me the secret of water breathing. She turned around, a wide wet grin stretched across her features. I ain't breathing it, boy. I'm just having a drink. Don't mock me, he said stiffly. Either you're Serene Relas and you will teach me the spell of breathing water, or you aren't. Those are the only possibilities. If you're gonna learn to breathe water, you're gonna have to learn that there are more possibilities than that, boy. The School of Alteration is all about possibilities. Changing patterns, making things be what they could be. Maybe I ain't Serene Relas, but I can teach you how to breathe water. She wiped her mouth dry. Or maybe I am Serene Relas, and I won't. Or maybe even I can teach you to breathe water, but you can't learn. I'll learn, he said simply. Why don't you just buy yourself a spell of water breathing or a potion over at the Mage's Guild, she asked. That's how it's generally done. They're not powerful enough, he said. I need to be underwater for a long time. I'm willing to pay whatever you ask, but I don't want any questions. I was told you could teach me. What is your name, boy? That's a question, he replied. His name was Therian Winloth, but in Vivek, they called him the Toll Man. His job, such as it was, was collecting a percentage of the loot from the smugglers when they came into the harbor to bring his boss into Kamanatong. Of the value of that percentage, he earned another percentage. In the end, it was very small indeed. He had scarcely any gold of his own, and what he had, he gave to Serene Relas. The lessons began that very day. The sorceress brought her pupil, who she simply called Boy, out to a low sandbank across the sea. I will teach you a powerful spell for breathing water, she said, but you must become a master of it. As with all spells and all skills, the more you practice, the better you get. Even that ain't enough. To achieve true mastery, you must understand what it is you're doing. It ain't simply enough to perform a perfect thrust of a blade. You must also know what you're doing, and why. That's common sense, said Therian. Yes, it is, said Serene, closing her eyes. But the spells of alteration are all about uncommon sense, the infinite possibilities. Breaking the sky, swallowing space, dancing with time, setting ice on fire, believing that the unreal may become real. You must learn the rules of the cosmos, and then break them. That sounds very difficult, replied Therian, trying to keep a straight face. Zareen pointed to a small silverfish darting along the water's edge. If they don't find it so, they breathe water just fine. But that's not magic. What I'm saying to you, boy, is that it is. For several weeks, Serene drilled her student, and the more he understood about what he was doing, and the more he practiced, the longer he could breathe underwater. When he found that he could cast the spell for as long as he needed, he thanked the sorceress, and bade her farewell. There is one last lesson I have to teach you, she said. You must learn that desire is not enough. The world will end your spells no matter how good you are, and no matter how much you want it. That's a lesson I'm happy not to learn, he said, and left at once for the short journey back to Vivek. The wharfs were much the same, with all the same smells, the same sounds, and the same characters. His boss had found a new tollman, he learned from his mates. They were still looking out for the smuggler's ship Morodrung, 
but they had given up hope of ever seeing it. Therian knew they would not. He had seen it sink from the wharf a long time ago. On a moonless night, he cast his spell and dove into the thrashing purple waves. He kept his mind on the world of possibilities. That books could sing. That green was blue. That water was air. That every stroke and kick brought him closer to his sunken ship filled with treasure. He felt Magicka surge all around him as he pushed his way deeper down. Ahead, he saw a ghostly shadow of Morodrunk, its mass billowing in a wind of deep water currents. He also felt his spell begin to fade. He could break reality long enough to breathe water all the way back up to the surface, but not enough to reach the ship. The next night, he dove again, and this time, the spell was stronger. He could see the vessel in detail, clouded over and dusted in sediment. The wound in its hull where it had struck the reef, a glint of gold beckoning from within, but still he felt reality closing in, and he had to resurface. The third night, he made it into the steerage, past the bloated corpses of the sailors nibbled and picked apart by fish, their glassy eyes bulging, their mouths stretched open. Had they only known the spell, he thought briefly, but his mind was much more occupied by the gold scattered along the floor. The boxes that contained them shattered. He considered scooping as much as he could carry into his pockets, but a sturdy iron box seemed to bespeak more treasure. On the wall was a row of keys. He took each down and tried it on the locked box, but none opened it. One key, however, was missing. Thalion looked around the room. Where could it be? His eyes went to the corpse of one of the sailors, floating in a dance of death not far from the box. His hands tightly clutched something. It was a key. When the ship had began to sink, the sailor had evidently gone for the iron box. Whatever was in it had to be very valuable. Thalion took the sailor's key and opened the box. It was filled with broken glass. He rummaged around until he felt something solid, and pulled out two flasks of some kind of wine. He smiled and considered the foolishness of the poor alcoholic. This was what was important to the sailor, out of all the treasures in the Morodrung. Then, suddenly, Thalion Winloth felt reality. He had not been paying attention to the grim, tireless advance of the world on his spell. It was fading away, his ability to breathe water. There was no time to surface. There was no time to do anything. As he sucked in, his lungs filled with cold, briny water. A few days later, the smugglers working on the wharf came upon the drowned body of the former Tolman. Finding a body in the waters of Vivek was not in and of itself noteworthy. But the subject that they discussed over many bottles of Flynn was how did it happen that he drowned with two potions of water breathing in his hands. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you could leave a like and subscribe, that would motivate me to make more videos. So if you like seeing new content, please go and do that. Also, if you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like made in the future, things you'd like me to read, please go and leave those in the comments section down below. I want to make stuff that you guys want to hear, so it would be a real big help if you could go and do that. I'm going to try to get on a little bit more of a consistent uploading schedule. Uh, try and look out for new videos about every week. These things take quite a while to edit, but I like doing it, so keep on the lookout for new stuff. Thanks a lot for listening. Have a great one.